Well, it's been a pretty crazy year in creative AI, and as the old saying goes, things are moving pretty fast. But when you're in the moment, it's often hard to judge exactly how fast that is. So today we're going to take a look at a lot of the stuff that we covered in 2024. Because I genuinely think that when you lay everything out month by month, you're going to be really surprised at how far we've come in just 12 months. Okay, let's go speed run 2024. So admittedly, January started off a little on the sleepy side, but Runway did introduce multi-motion brushes in, well, at the time, this was Gen 2. Friend of the channel, Jeff Synthesize, came up with a pretty great use case for multi-motion brushes, namely that of expression control, something that we will, of course, be seeing later on this year. But, you know, overall, January was a bit of a sleepy month, but that's okay, because February was waiting like a tidal wave. Kicking off February, Midjourney introduced style references. This, of course, allowed you to take the style of a reference image and apply it to a new prompt. But at launch, it did not have the style reference codes that most Midjourney users are used to at this point. Interestingly, and actually I didn't realize this, but Midjourney's V6 was released in December of 2023. And as we exit 2024, we are on Midjourney version 6.1, meaning we've got an entire calendar year without a numbered update. Google's Lumiere was also unveiled this month. This was a text and image to video model that would allow for video in painting as well. And yes, in typical Google fashion, Lumiere never released, though it did plant the seeds for VO and VO2, which I do believe will be released in 2025. We'll talk a little bit about that when we get there. But of course, the big bombshell of February, and in my opinion, what set the tone for the rest of 2024 was when OpenAI unveiled Sora. We will, of course, talk more about the actual eventual release of Sora when we get there. But, you know, for a brief moment, I, I do just kind of want to revisit Tokyo Woman walking on the street or astronaut with the red knitted cap, both of whom became, I mean, kind of icons of AI video generation for the remainder of 2024. I think if anything, Sora in February of 2024 really gave us our first look at what the future of AI video was going to look like. Although that future may or may not be generated by Sora. Moving on, it is now time to beware the Ides of March. Uh, AI music generation took a pretty big jump up when Suno updated from their V2 model to their V3 model. Suno V3, in my opinion, really kind of set the benchmark for AI generated music. And although we will see another Suno update, in 2024. I mean, I think that V3 still sounds pretty good. In March, we also got Emo Talker or Emo or Emote Portrait Alive. This, of course, was the model that really kicked off the whole talking head video generated by one audio source. After Emo Talker, things were not the same as it ever was. That is a talking heads reference because I have a lot of gray in my hair. The Mid Journey chefs were still in the kitchen and March brought us character reference or dash dash C ref. This of course being a feature that many hoped would unlock consistent characters. While I do think that this feature is pretty good. It obviously still takes a lot of massaging. Hopefully we will see an update to this in version seven when that releases in 2025. Things got a little on the rocky side for OpenAI in March as well, with Mir Marathi's, uh, you know, fairly disastrous interview with the Wall Street Journal regarding Sora's training data. And finally, in March, Figure AI released a demo of their Figure One robot conversing with a human, which effectively proved to us that it was not Will Smith eating spaghetti that was our future, but rather Will Smith in iRobot. Well, 2025 is right around the corner, and it is more obvious than ever that AI is going to play a huge role in our lives. Now, we tend to focus on the creative end here, but you know, there's always a front office that needs tending to. This is just another place that AI can help you shine. Like, say you're learning to play chess. Would you rather figure out how each piece moves through trial and error or learn from established strategies and openings developed over the centuries? That's exactly what a comprehensive prompt library does for AI, and I have one for for you from HubSpot. Instead of spending countless hours crafting prompts from scratch, you're building on proven foundations. And these aren't just random prompts. They're battle-tested formulas covering everything from strategic development to brand development, SEO optimization, and paid advertising campaigns. I mean, every minute you spend reinventing basic prompts is time that you could be focusing on what matters. Customizing and refining these prompts for your unique business needs. The best part is as you use these pre-built prompts, you will naturally discover what makes them effective. Effective. You'll understand the patterns, logic, and structure, and then take those insights 
to create your own specialized prompts that align with your goals. In today's fast-paced digital landscape, it is not about working harder, it's about working smarter. A prompt library isn't just a shortcut, it's a launchpad to AI mastery. I highly recommend you download it in the description below. All of this, of course, is brought to you by HubSpot, who I would like to thank for sponsoring today's video. Sliding into April, and I'm probably sneezing because of all the stupid pollen. So Stable Diffusion 3 was released, although you could only access it via the Stability API. There was a pretty good amount of controversy at the time, not only due to its sort of lackluster results, but also the fact that it wasn't, you know, released open source to the community. Adobe also previewed their Firefly video model and teased that it would also allow for third-party integrations, including Runway and Sora. To note, as someone that edits in Premiere, uh, yes, we still have not seen these features, maybe in 2025. April also saw the release of a new AI music generation platform called Udio. Udio was quickly positioned as a Suno killer, to note, not by me. I don't like doing that, you know, this killed that type content. For me, both platforms are great and offer unique features. Uh, you know, there doesn't have to be a king of the hill. More is always better. Rounding out April, Microsoft gave us kind of their take on Emotalker with Vasa One, lifelike audio-driven talking faces generated in real time. Although to note, at that time, you were still sort of stuck in one-by-one -one portrait shots and, you know, your subject couldn't move. Although, obviously, by the end of the year, that was going to change. Finally, sneaking in at just the end of April, the first of the Chinese video models appeared with Vidyu. In their opening salvo, they were definitely taking shots directly at OpenAI's Sora model with prompts essentially, you know, one-to-one -one pasted from the initial Sora examples, albeit uh, showcasing a number of others with like, a certain Chinese flair. Obviously, this was not going to be the only video model coming out of China this year, but hey, props to video, you were the first. May was another big month of kind of like highs and lows for OpenAI. Uh, they released the ChatGPT 4.0 model, a big feature of which was the voice assistant. And to be honest, I actually used the voice assistant quite a lot. That said, they quickly came under fire by Scarlett Johansson for their use of the Sky voice, which sounded remarkably like her. The Sky voice was very quickly removed from Voice Assistant, which was kind of a bummer because that really was the best voice. In response to the OpenAI Spring event, Google brought out, well, all the guns for its Google I.O. event. I think a fair critique of Google's I.O. this year is that it was disjointed. That said, there were a number of really interesting things coming out of it, notably for this channel, uh, Google's View. View one, of course, being their answer to Sora, although to note, again, like Lumiere, we actually never saw V1. Sliding over to June, so basically halfway through the year, uh, man, this was a month, uh, starting with the surprise drop of Luma Labs Dream Machine. This one definitely took everyone by surprise. Up until this point, we'd seen a lot of like Sora-like generators, but nothing had released. Uh, Luma came out and dropped Dream Machine uh, for free. Now at launch, Dream Machine did not have its, I guess it's kind of its most widely known feature of first frame, last frame, although it did do text to video and image to video. Now what's kind of crazy is that just five days later, Runway dropped Gen 3. Now at the time, given Luma's release and all that we had seen in the last six months, uh, everyone was pretty much declaring Runway dead. If anything, Gen 3's release just kind of reinforces a point that I'm always making, never count anyone out of the fight. But June was not done with us yet as we got our second Chinese video model, uh, Kwai Xu's Kling. Now at the time it was, to put it lightly, a bit of a mess to get Kling access. Uh, you needed a Chinese mobile phone number, but there were a couple of workarounds around that. Luckily it wasn't too long before Kling opened up the platform and everyone was able to generate more or less worldwide. Sliding over to July, this was actually kind of a quiet month, at least for us in AI video. Uh, there were obviously lots of other developments happening in other areas, such as LLMs. That said, the two bigger stories on our side was that Runway's Gen 3 introduced image to video and Live Portrait dropped, which really put gas on the whole talking head AI avatar thing. Uh, yeah, this guy right here is definitely asking himself, how did I get here? So if July was a little on the quiet side, it's only because we were taking a knee before the sprint of the next few months. Uh, August introduced us to Black Forest Labs Flux. Flux very quickly established itself just about everywhere and for good reason, it's really good. Black Forest Labs is also working on a video generator. We did not see that in 2024, but I'm excited to see what they have in store for 2025. 
Ideogram or Ideogram, I'm still not exactly sure how to say that, but I will say that it is the king of AI text, uh, updated to its 2.0 model this month as well. Ideogram is a platform that I always keep in my AI tool belt for when I need to generate up text. And with the 2.0 model, I really think that it took a jump up in terms of quality and creativity. August also gave us our first one-shot uh, character to text to video with video. The initial results there were, uh, they were kind of okay, but we were not very far from things taking a big jump up. September introduced us to, well, if you read the comments here, definitely the crowd favorite, Hilu slash Minimax. Gen 3 also released video to video, which I still think is super slept on. Kling also updated to their 1.5 model, and we got a look at another Chinese video model, uh, this one from ByteDance called Seaweed, although to note, we are closing out 2024 without ever seeing it here in the West. As a quick side note, September also gave us the release of Google Notebook LM, which, uh, I don't know, very quickly became my favorite podcast. And that has all sorts of implications. For sure. So what does this mean for, like, me, the average person, or our listeners? Spooky season kicks in in October, and suddenly everything smells like cinnamon and pumpkin spice. Minimax gives us image to video and pretty much cements itself as S tier down in the comments below. And we get our first look at Meta's Movie Gen, which is a model that well, promises to do all the things. Not only do we get really impressive looking text to video out of it, but character referencing as well, video in painting and sound. To note, we actually have not seen Movie Gen yet, Although it looks like the plan is to roll this into Instagram next year. So uh, yeah, that one kind of makes sense for Meta. October closes out with Runway burning down the house of all of those talking head AI avatars with the release of Act 1. If there was definitely a theme to November, it was essentially training everywhere. The fact that we can now provide models with a lot more reference material as opposed to just one shots uh, definitely ends up improving the overall like fidelity and quality of our outputs. Although that said, just remember to smile every once in a while. And that ultimately brings us to the big finale of 2024. And it was definitely filled with some highs and lows. The big news, of course, being after 10 months of relentless carrot dangling, uh, OpenAI's Sora was released. Relatively disappointing, I think, was the overall consensus, considering that the version of Sora that we got was a turbo model, not, you know, big daddy Sora. So it was definitely prone to a lot of hallucinations. Couple that with the fact that you would have to upgrade to the $200 version of Sora in order to get anything that I think you or I would find useful out of it. Overall, I think the release definitely met with a sour taste. That said, I do think that with some upgrades and maybe by the time we hit Sora 2, there is a very capable model here. And if you wanted to try the uh, quote unquote pro version uh, and not spend $200, you can actually use it on the $20 version through the holidays. So there is that. In the meantime, we also got a new open source video model called Hunyon, which uh, looks very good. Runway upgraded Act 1 nearly to the point where I believe that it should be called Act 2, allowing for, you know, driving video to be pasted into existing AI video. To be honest, this is actually one of the releases that I'm most excited about this year. And finally, as a chaser to the bitter pill that was the Sora release, Google has begun rolling out VO2. And again, although we never actually saw VO1, uh, it does look like VO2 will be in wide release by early next year. So by no means is that everything that happened in 2024, but I do think that it serves as some good goalposts for where we started and where we ended. If anything, I think it really serves at how mind-boggling December of 2025 is going to look. So in theory, this should be my last video of 2024, and I'd just like to take a second to thank all of you for watching. You guys are the best. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and a great new year, and I'll see you in 2025.